Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today we will have a look at my new 3D printer. Except that it is actually not new, I guess, because I had it for over a month, but I just haven't had time to do a video about it. But we will do that today. But before we get into that, I have a little announcement. Because I have created a second YouTube channel where I can put all this off-topic stuff because I don't want to fill up this electronics channel with uh, 3D printers and building computers and stuff like that that has nothing to do with actually building electronics so I made a second channel and it is called Easy Tech Time and there will be a link to that down in the description or you can just go to YouTube slash Easy Tech Time so on that channel I will do 3D printing and playing around with computers and all kind of stuff that I would kind of like to make a video about but I feel it it doesn't really belong on this channel so that will get onto there and who knows maybe I will upload as many videos to that as I will to this one because I do a lot of stuff in my spare time so but anyway back to the 3D printer I bought a Flashforge Creator X and it is a dual extrusion 3D printer and it can print a volume of 20 centimeters X direction 15 centimeters in the Y direction and also 15 centimeters in the C direction or Z direction or whatever we should say and as you can see it is a copy of the Megabot I think it's a replicator to the copy I am not quite sure but it has the same firmware as the Megabot and it does also use the Megabot software for the computer. And I have to admit that I am quite happy with this printer. I have never tried a Megabot but I think it it performs just the same. I really haven't had any problems with it at least. And let me just power it on him. Oops, I think I have to adjust the filter on the camera here so you can see the display. And the first thing we notice is a very loud fan underneath the printer here. And the next thing we notice is a nice RGB light or LED strip inside the printer. And that will make all kinds of light patterns. It is blue when it is cold and it will get red when it gets hotter and you can uh, choose the color that you want it to to show or shine or whatever once you are printing. And I like to keep that uh, white light because then it is easier to see what you are actually printing. So the main advantage over the previous Flashforge creator is the build platform. On this printer it is uh, about seven or eight millimeters thick where it was just uh, a, sh a sheet of aluminium on the old one. And the plate on the old printers uh, tended to warp a little bit once the printer have been warmed up and cooled down a couple of times. And as I said I had this uh, for over a month and I've been printing quite a few things on it and the build plate is still reasonably straight it has a, a few tenths of a millimeter I think from the middle to one of the corners but it is good enough that it will not uh, disturb the prints at least and the print bit here is heated of course if I forgot to say that and another advantage over the previous printer is that it is uh, all metal framing on this one. Sorry you can't actually see that from this angle but if I just lift the camera you can see the top here is all metal and down the sides here it is also metal. But the covers on the front and the side, the side is also closed. That is uh, some kind of MDF or something like that. So it should be sound dampening and this printer is also 
a lot more silent than the old one. They have also upgraded the adjustments for the build plate. So now you have only three uh, thumb screws where there were four on the old one. And this makes it a little easier to adjust. But apart from that, the extruders and all this linear railing here is exactly the same. It is also the same software and the same firmware in the actual printer. You can see the two extruders are mounted here and there's a fan for each. And it has a stepper motor directly on the extruder. So it can print uh, rubber and stuff like that as well. And the filament is pulled by the extruder down through these tubes here. And they go to the spool mounts on the back of the unit. So let me just turn the printer around. And as you can see I have mounted one spool on here. The other one go on here of course. And that is black ABS. And this little thing you see here is one giant zip tie because this flex tubing here with the wires tend to fall over when the, when the printer is printing if you don't put something in there. But it works just fine with a zip tie so no problem. It can of course connect to your computer via USB and there's a little button in there. I don't actually know what that does. I never tried to press it but I guess it's not important. And as you can see on the label here, it will work both with 110 and 220 volts. Or 115 and 230, I guess it's, it should be called. You do have to flick a little switch on the bottom of the printer though. So I guess if you live in the United States or somewhere where they have uh, 115 volts, I guess you'll have to do that yourself. The printer comes with a little sticker on the front saying that it is set to 230 volts. So I guess that is enough for the talking. I bet you'd rather see it print some stuff. So let's try to get it heated up and start a print. And I think I'll do the first part of the print now. And then I will add in a video that I recorded about a month ago when I printed the first thing with the printer. Because the uh, first layers didn't record that well in that video. I had a little problem with the focus and the light. So hopefully I can do that better in this video and then I will link in the whole video speed it up of the first print. And now it will just have to heat up. And it does take its fat time about that. It can take uh, about 15 minutes if you have to, to get the heat plate to 115 degrees or thereabouts. And as you can see there is a purple reddish light in the printer. But I have some very bright light in this room so it doesn't show up that well here. But if you have it in a, a normal lit room, then it will be very easy to see. And just in case you want to see the display while it is heating up, here is a shot of that. And we are just about to start the print now. So it will just draw a line to clear the nozzle here.
And let me just cancel this build now so you can see what the first layers actually look like. And then we will take uh, the rest in the next clip. So this is pretty hot. So this is kind of how your first layers will look like. And here is just a freehand shot from the top of the printer. And I think it looks pretty decent at least. So, so I promised you to show a video of an entire print. And we will take a look at the video where I printed this. And this is uh, a fan mount for the printer. And it goes on here like, like that. And it will blow on the top layers that have just been printed to cool them down quicker. And that will prevent the print from warping when you're printing in PLA. I actually ended up printing another one because uh, this, as you might be able to see, has very limited airflow. So even the, if you put a 25 millimeter thick fan on here, it doesn't blow that much out of these. So I ended up printing another one with a with a more free airflow. But anyway, this is printed without any support at all. It's just printed one layer at a time, one on top of the other. And here comes the video. And as you can see I have already used it. I added a piece of tape here to block these two holes and there's a nut still in there. But anyway if you want to skip the video of this print I will put a, a link in here somewhere.
So, I hope you liked my re little review of the Flashforge Create X here. All in all, I think it's a very good printer for the price. If I had bought a Megabot printer here in Denmark, I would have paid four times the price of this one. And this came in at just over $1,000. So I know you can get the the Megabot for less than four times that, but if you have to buy it in Denmark, it is around $4,000. On the other hand, I have no idea about the components used in this thing, if they are a decent quality or if it is just the cheapest they could find in China. So I have no idea if it will last as long as the Megabot. I'm sure the Megabot will be built in reasonably good quality. But this actually doesn't look cheap in any way. It is uh, it is very nicely made indeed. Anyway, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you disliked it, you can always give it the thumbs down. If you do so, please leave a comment tell me what I can do better in the future videos. Because I do actually want you to like my videos, so <laughs> I will do uh, anything I can to make them better. If you like these videos, then remember Future off-topic videos will probably be on my second channel, EC Tech Time. And I will do a proper announcement video telling yeah, more about the channel as well. So, thanks for watching this video and I will see ya.